Welcome to Career Pathways, a series developed by the School of Humanities and Social Sciences at Indiana University East. We will introduce you to professionals in our region who hold an undergraduate degree in the liberal arts. Our conversations will explore the pathways that have led them to their current professional positions. We will also learn more about the knowledge and skills they gained as undergraduates that have aided them in their professional lives. Hello and thank you for joining us for this episode of Career Pathways. I am your host, Michael Scott, and today we're joined by Stephanie Hill Alexander and Allison Seidel. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, they are here today to talk to us about um, their undergraduate experience and just how that's uh, transferred over to their current positions today. So why don't you go ahead and just introduce yourself and just tell us uh, uh, what your undergraduate degree was in. My name is Stephanie Hill Alexander and my undergraduate degree is from Manchester University and I have an, a bachelor's degree in communication studies. And I'm Allison Zeidel and I went to DePaul University and my undergraduate is in studio arts with a focus in ceramics. Great, thank you both for being here today. Sure. Um, so, Stephanie, just, just right off the bat, you know, um, why, why did you uh, uh, choose this major in, in communications? I chose it because I was a kid in high school who was active in speech and debate and you know theater and, and dramatic um, arts and things like that. So for me, studying communications is a really great way to just continue that study. And um, I, I really um, I felt comfortable with that choice knowing that no matter what I did, it would be a good foundation for you know lots of different kinds of work and activities. So for me, it was a choice that was just kind of a natural extension of what I was already doing and what I already felt comfortable with in high school. Great, great. Allison, what, what about you? Um, I wasn't quite as intentional as Steph was. She <laughs> thought that through and I didn't, I didn't do as good of a job thinking through, but um, my brother was actually a studio arts major and a TA in a ceramics class and convinced me to take the class and I had I thought I had no artistic ability at all and took the class just for fun to fulfill that art mm -hmm. credit that you have to do in liberal arts schools and I just got hooked and mm -hmm. I wasn't even that good at it at first but I just kept working at it and I loved it so um, I was convinced then that maybe that was a good place to go, good yeah, path to go. Yeah. I think it's always interesting how uh, just kind of our stories and journeys begin in college and just kind of see where they develop mm -hmm. even towards their junior and senior year and just how it's how it's so uh, developed in, in a different path mm -hmm. um, into a different professional altogether. So yeah. um, so what, um, Stephanie, what were your plans after college? You know, junior, senior years wrapping up mm -hmm. and, and what, what, what were your plans? I did not really have a plan, and I, I, I'm kind of embarrassed to admit that, but it's, it's important, no, I think. That's good, because that's my answer, too. <laughs> <laughs> no, I really, you know, I, I was so focused on college, and I, I loved being in college, and um, I graduated, of course, and sort of, honestly, the truth is, I floundered a little bit mm -hmm. after college graduation. I, I had a great education, I had great experiences, and it was admittedly very hard for me to kind of translate that into, you know, the next step and mm -hmm. the, how how will I apply this and how how will I sort of translate that to work? So I I had some jobs in sales, I had some jobs in retail, and really just kind of honestly floundered until mm -hmm. um, until I kind of. I was graduated for about three years when I finally sort of figured it out and, and had a plan. So I was I was a little bit little bit delayed after graduation. So the truth is, you know, as as unflattering as it is, is I really didn't have a good plan after college. Sure. So it just took some exploring for mm -hmm. you to do. So mm -hmm. and that, and that's you know great to do as well. You know, that's a, a much experience. nicer way of saying it. Yeah, <laughs> yes. Yes. Allison, what what about you? What were your plans? Um, I I was the same way. I actually wasn't sure what I wanted to do when I graduated. Um, I wasn't sure all the way through college. I was never one of those mm -hmm. kids that I knew exactly what I wanted to do when I grew up. I had about six careers I wanted to try. Um, so when I graduated with an art degree, I met with a couple artists, Terry Logan was one of them, mm -hmm. a couple other people just to say, so what's it like trying to make a living off of your art? Um, and I honestly wasn't sure I was ready to do that. It's, um, it's tough to do, but that art major gave me enough kind of skills in the area of creativity to think, okay, what what other things should I be trying? And I was always really attracted to the nonprofit world. Mm -hmm. So I took a temporary job at Cope Center, and this is my 14th year. Oh, <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, but I, I didn't have a plan either. But it was, mm -hmm. um, I think the liberal arts colleges and the liberal arts education just mm -hmm. kind of prepares you for, mm -hmm. well, you can figure it out. You have a lot mm -hmm. of other skills than just your major. Um, so it gives you mm -hmm. the opportunity to 
think through it a little yeah. bit more. Yeah, I agree. Uh, yeah, and, and I think what's what's great about you know the liberal arts program or, or just a degree in humanities is that um, uh, working th with people, through people, and just the knowledge and skills that you gain are mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. transferable to any type of career that you mm -hmm. want to pursue. So, right. um, uh, what kind of uh, um, knowledge did you gain in your undergraduate degree that you thought was kind of surprising to, to learn about? Uh, for me, I, I think I always, I've, I felt like the degree that I had sort of prepared me, as Allison said, for, you know, anything, I felt like anything that I would encounter, I would be prepared for. I sort of felt ready for just about anything. And my undergraduate degree really helped me say yes to a lot of different kinds of experiences and activities, and, and so that's been wonderful. But I think I've, I've always been kind of surprised by how no matter what role I, I find myself in or what kind of work I'm doing, the ability to communicate effectively mm -hmm. and to be comfortable you know, in front of one or two people or a large group of people, that those skills have been useful for me across the board. In, in mm -hmm. every role that I occupy and everything that I do, that has been certainly for me the constant, that, that that's been the one thing that's really been particularly useful for right. me. Right, yeah, yeah. yeah knowledge and skills from from your perspective that's kind of transferred over yeah um, but being an art major is a, just a little bit different but mm -hmm. I think a lot of what I learned and gained that I didn't realize until I left school was problem-solving skills um, it's a very technical art that I was mm -hmm. doing so very hands-on and I'm dealing with kilns very powerful pieces of equipment and things and um, my professor that was my um, mentor actually left to go on sabbatical the last semester I was there and so it was kind of learn how to operate this mm -hmm. kiln and learn how to do all of these things or don't graduate. You just figure out how do you get mm -hmm. that done. And so there were a lot of problem solving skills. Okay, well, I'm just going to have to figure out all of the things that I would have had a professor kind of watching over me do. I had to learn all that stuff early and it got me through um, some confidence things and mm -hmm. um, really I think the just that problem solving and kind of figuring out you do this or, or um, you don't get through and right. so you figure out how to do it. Sure. And that's I sure. think the surprising thing that I learned. Mm -hmm. Good, good. Um, I think you both have, have, have talked about this and touched on this a little bit, but would you say, um, was there just like a, a kind of in that, that transition from graduating to kind of where you're at now, would you say that there was a moment where there was just like a spark of like, I know what I want to do, or, or do we feel like it was kind of a slow development process through different career paths or, or different skills that you've gained that kind of led you into your current positions? Mm -hmm. For me, it was it was slow, mm -hmm. um, but it, the moment that I realized it was very serendipitous. I had a friend of our family that I ran into at Christmas time, who was working in admissions at IU East, and I thought that sounds like a lot of fun. That that job sounds like a great job for me, and so for me, it was just sort of you know fortuitous running into a friend who had a job that sounded great, and that helped me really helped me have some direction and kind of figure out the next step, which has been. You know, that's it, it was sort of a stroke of luck, but um, it was the spark that I needed, definitely. Good. good. Yeah. yeah. Allison, would, would you say? Mine was a little slow growing as well, mm -hmm. but I think once I um, landed in the environment and environmental education, there was a spark that like, oh yeah, this is how I've been that type of kid, and I, you know, grew up thinking in these terms, and I went to college and did little kind of extracurricular curricular things in these areas. And so all of a sudden, once I landed there, even though I thought it was just kind of a temporary pass-through job, all of a sudden I thought, even if this is not the exact job I want, this is the field I should at least spend a good amount of time in because yeah. this is really where my passion is. And as I said before, the nonprofit world was really attractive to me too. So, um, yeah, after and after you worked in it for a while, I thought, oh, this is, yeah, this is the fit that I've been looking for. I just didn't realize mm -hmm. it at the time. Yeah, and I think that the scary thing for, for undergraduates is that they believe that when they've declared a major and, the, and they, they, they're going towards you know, graduation, that that is the major that they have mm -hmm. to stick with, with mm -hmm. the rest of their life. Mm -hmm. and, and you know, as professionals, we try to communicate that you know, that's totally not mm -hmm. what you have to do. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, if, if, if that's the path you want to take, then that's mm -hmm. fantastic. But you know, um, it's almost a development to that spark, right. as, as you've explained, Allison, yeah. that, that's kind of the big reveal of, like, you know, I, this is kind of where I'm at, and I think I want to keep going with it. So, mm -hmm. yeah, that would be terrifying to think that it, that's that's a huge yeah. decision. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. Um, I think it is good to think about 
this is you working out your passion while you're in mm -hmm. school. And um, I think a liberal arts degree just gives you so many opportunities. Like Stephanie mm -hmm. said, you just have to be a really good communicator coming out of those schools mm -hmm. and coming out of that field. And so if you know how to write, you know how to communicate effectively, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter what your major is, you're going you're gonna to do fine. Yeah, and, um, yeah. So. And I think an undergraduate degree in liberal arts also gives you, like Allison talked about problem solving, and, and for me that, that has been also just sort of thinking analytically and um, you know, problem solving certainly being a part of that. But no matter, no matter what you do, you know, no matter what your job is, I think those skills in, in being analytical, thinking through problems, problem solving, you know, working well in groups, working well you know, alone, those are skills I think that are transferable you know, no matter mm -hmm. what one does. And so yeah. as, as we you know, grow and evolve and have different kinds of jobs, certainly those skills, I think the need for those skills remains. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and, and speaking of our, our liberal arts students, do you feel like our liberal arts students are kind of some of the more qualified or uh, best candidates for hire? Well, I, I've been hiring <laughs> people lately, and mm -hmm. I'm, um, I'm always looking for good writers. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter what your job at Cope Center is. You could be, I mean, you could be the office manager, you could be a programmer, you could be, and I'm just looking for really good writing schools because if you can't, or skills, if you can't communicate with the community effectively, mm -hmm or if there's just typos everywhere, or there's, you know, their, your grammar is poor or something, it just sends off a bad message for the entire kind of organization. So I really look for that, and I think um, liberal arts um, background has constantly proved that that's a really good thing. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm, I think when I'm hiring, that's the type of thing we're looking for. We're also looking for flexibility. So mm -hmm. um, we do not just hire people that are environmental majors. I was an environmental mm -hmm. major. We hire people who can put on a lot of different hats and be flexible mm -hmm. and enjoy that type of thing um, and are also lifelong learners. They're willing to learn. They may love being in front of a kid but not have that much nature knowledge, but that's okay. If you're willing to learn, that's what we're looking for. Yeah. Yeah. So. yeah, yeah, I think uh, um, humanities or liberal arts students are really creating a holistic leader mm -hmm. uh, for society, you know, and, right. and that's great for you to say that that's what employers are looking for, yeah. and not just what an environmental uh, type of student mm -hmm. or, you know, one that has just specifically been geared towards higher education, you know, mm -hmm. one that's had, you know, plenty of different experience to make them a, a, a great professional mm -hmm. in right. higher education or, or the field of environmental. Mm -hmm. So, right. um, uh, if you were, uh, were meeting uh, with a student um, uh, that was going to choose a, a major in the liberal arts program, uh, uh, what kind of advice would you give, give for them? Well, in my, in my role at Ivy Tech, I have these conversations with students and their families a lot. And um, what's interesting for me, I've, I come from a liberal arts background, and, and it is, you know, I, I love it, and it has served me. But many of the students that I work with at Ivy Tech are a little more focused. They, they want, certainly they're, they're interested in lots of different things, but many of the students I talk to have a very specific goal. You know, they want, they want to learn skills to be a nurse or an accountant or, you know, a, a computer programmer. So those students... I think are, are very different than I was and, and certainly have a different sort of focus. But I, I think even still, in, in addition to those skills and those knowledge and all of those classes that they're going to get at Ivy Tech, they also have to take lots of other classes. So sort of that general education sort of rounds out what they're learning in welding or accounting or nursing. So I think, you know, even for our students, that, that focus on, you know, reading well and writing well and speaking well and, you know, thinking analytically, it's still there. It's a much smaller piece in the education and the, you know, the programs that we do at Ivy Tech, but it's a piece that I still think is important. And I spend a lot of time talking to students, you know, on, on both sides of that coin. You know, the technical skills are certainly important, but all of those, those other soft skills are certainly valuable as well. So I kind of, for me, it's, it's an interesting role because it's, it's sort of the opposite of what I came from, but I see the value of both. Sure. You know, certainly both are important. Mm -hmm. Sure, I know, Allison. It's it's a, a little bit different for you, mm -hmm. you know. But um, uh, if if you had a, a current uh, college student working for you, you mm -hmm. know, is is there any kind of advice that you would give for them mm -hmm. as as far as uh, what kind of major to choose? Um, it goes back to what we were talking about earlier of choose something that you're passionate about, mm -hmm. something that you love. Um, those are four traditionally four year college of years that are really fun and growing years and you can't get those years back mm -hmm. and so to be doing something that you think you're supposed to be doing instead of something that actually makes you happy that can be a pretty miserable experience and sure. you don't want to reflect on college that way um, but going back to what Stephanie said as long as you can figure out how to communicate effectively and mm -hmm. write well 
go for the major that makes you the happiest and something that makes you happy. And then if you are worried about being marketable when you get out of college, use those years to then intern and volunteer for mm -hmm. areas that you think may be a career path for you. Because when we're, again, looking at candidates for a new job, we're looking for what experiences have you had mm -hmm. at camps with kids, what experience, even if your major, your major could be cooking. But if you uh, have a lot of experience in front of you know kids at camps and have done that sort of work, that's really uh, some yeah. of the meat that we're looking at as well. Yeah. So yeah, um, it's, you know, it's, spend that time kind of focusing on those type of things too. Yeah, it's it's really those those internships and job mm -hmm. shadowing experience that really kind of completes the resume process. They do, yeah, know. they do. They're very important, mm -hmm. really important. I would add volunteer work to mm -hmm. that. And as well. volunteer work, yeah, yes, right. yes, yes, yeah. definitely, very yeah. Important. Um, so say that um, uh, you're an employer, you know, and, and you're wanting to, to hire someone. Uh, what kind of um, skills, you know, are you looking for mm -hmm. to, to hire? You know, I know, I know you both have two different mm -hmm. per perspectives that you're looking for, too. Well, I want to be clear. I don't do hiring. Sure. I don't, I'm not responsible for hiring at Ivy Tech. But in, um, in my past, when I have been responsible for those things, I tended to look for the skills that Allison talked about. Mm -hmm. Someone who could communicate effectively, someone who um, was confident, who was poised, mm -hmm. who could problem solve, who could prioritize, who could kind of navigate those situations. Because my feeling was that I could, you can always train someone how to do a job or how to have a specific skill, but what's harder to find in an employee are, are those, those sort of um, soft skills, the ability mm -hmm. to communicate, the ability to problem solve, prioritize, those sorts of things. So when I've been in that position, those have been the things that I've looked for primarily. Mm -hmm. Sure, yeah. Allison? Yeah, that's, I, I echo that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. We also look for people who are um, good in groups. They like to work mm -hmm. in partnerships with people, a um, lot of diverse types of experience, even if they're right out of college, and we hire right out of college a lot, kind of those diverse type of group work experiences, um, and people who are easy to get along with. And, and confident, mm -hmm. but not overconfident. Mm -hmm. those, that's the type of you, because you're, you're stuck with that person for a long time. Right. You're working with them, <laughs> yeah. and in Cope Center, it's a small group, and you, know, you want to just find those people that are easy to work with and kind of a go-getter attitude, but also, what can I do for you instead of this job's all about me? Yeah, I th and I think I think you both said it w uh, when you're talking about with confidence because it's mm -hmm. a that's a really hard thing to teach is mm -hmm. to is to uh, teach confidence into mm -hmm. a student and I feel like when you've kind of uh, taught that confidence with the student you know all the other th skills kind of come into place that yeah. they can become a, a confident uh, professional but you know you know being teachable and, mm -hmm. and learning a new position you know that that will definitely come in place mm -hmm. but um, it's those uh, those soft skills and the, the mm -hmm. confidence that that we really want to um, place in our students so yeah. um, well we're, we're getting close to, to wrapping up but is, is there any other advice that you could share for um, our liberal arts <laughs> students or, or just kind of uh, getting towards graduation and afterwards? I would give them the advice that, that I give to lots of people. Say yes. Say yes to opportunities, to experiences, to volunteer work, internships, opportunities. Because I think, I think many times our inclination is to say, oh, well, I've never done that before, mm -hmm. or I, I don't know anybody in my family who's done that, or you know, we can find lots of reasons to say no, but I, I think it's important to say yes, because I think those experiences not only are valuable in that they teach us something, but they're also valuable in the connections that they can give you in the community. Experiences often lead to better experiences and greater experiences, so I, my advice would be to, to be open to those sorts of things and to say yes whenever possible. Great, mm -hmm. great, Thank wonderful. You. That's good advice. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah. I think I would I would advise people to also um, be a little naive about things. Mm -hmm. I think um, being a little naive can help you take risks that you might not otherwise take mm -hmm. risks after you've been in the workforce for five, ten, fifteen years. You may be a, a, a little less, you know, willing to yeah. be risky about things. And I think um, that's too bad because we don't. I don't think it is much uh, creative risk taking as we could if people were. Taught, you know, remember, try out something just because it didn't work for somebody else mm -hmm. m may not be, you know, the same experience you have. So, um, a healthy amount of risk taking, I think, is yes. a good thing. Yeah. Well, that's that's great advice from yeah. both of you. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Stephanie. Thank you, Allison, for coming in today. Sure. And thank you for um, uh, choosing career paths uh, today.